All right, Shalom, first and foremost, all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ha, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. And greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect. You out there that have changed your life towards righteousness in the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for you and your families, that you may earn salvation in these last days. All right, Shalom unto you. All right, I'm your brother Shaquah from the Las Vegas Church. And just going to go into uh, Romans 11 a little bit. Um, I see it's a topic that's going around. And basically, this is pretty straightforward stuff, man. I mean, this is pretty straightforward stuff. So hopefully I can hit the point. You know, may, may the Most High give me the, uh, may how about you, Shai, give me the Holy Spirit to, to uh, that this may be an edifying lesson. All right? So, um... I'm going to start with uh, Romans 11 and 1. I say, th I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? Yahweh for forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, so he's an Israelite, clearly. All right, but let's go to, let me see. I want to do this. We're going to go, go to <coughs> uh, Hosea. When I'll start up at 10. It says, uh, I'll start up at uh, 9. It says, um, matter of fact, verse 6. It says, uh, and she conceived. If you don't understand this story, which I'm not going to read at all, you can go back and read it yourself. Um, the Most High came to Hosea and uh, gave him uh, instructions to go take a harlot. And then to have seeds with those harlots, because that's how um, symbolic it would be of how the Most High would treat the nation of Israel. Okay? Uh, to, to keep it straight to the point. Now, back in verse 6, it says, And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and the Most High called unto him, Call her name Laruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord, Yahweh their power, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horse, nor by horsemen. Okay? And and when she had weaned Luruhamah, she conceived and bare a son, and said, The Most High, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people. And I will not be your power, right? So he, he basically put us away, right? That's in verse 9. Verse 10 says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. So it's showing you through prophecy that it will come back, that the Most High put us away, but it will come back and deal with us again. And for you that, that, that may know or you that may not know how that was happening, that was by the blood of Yahweh Shai, okay, the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, that we were able to come back unto him, and he became the mediator between the Most High and our people now. So he wouldn't deal with us directly anymore. We have to go through Yahweh Shai. Uh, scriptures say, um, um, you cannot come unto me unless you come through my son. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm paraphrasing it wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. We have to go through Yahweh Shai. I believe that's in John, and it's, uh, it may even be um, in Psalms. Don't quote me on that. If you know it, or you got better precepts, Baba Kusha, please put them in the um, in the uh, in the comments. It says, um, "Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel." be gathered together so we're both together it's not just one of them both together and appoint themselves one head king david as well as under um yahweh shai it says and they shall come up out of the land for great shall be the day of jezreel okay of, of uh i believe jezreel is like firstborn or something like that um but anyway so from there let's go back to the Matter of fact, let's go to the book of uh, Malachi. 
three. It's like 16 or something like that. Where is it? Three and um. Uh, let me see, eight maybe? Where was it? No, nope, that wasn't the one. It was six. Malachi 3 verse 6, I am the Lord Yahweh, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay. Alright, so you see how the Most High didn't put his people away. When when Paul was talking in the New Testament, you've seen it, how he would stop dealing with us, but he would come back to dealing with us in the book of Hosea. And now in Malachi, he said he changed not, that we wouldn't be consumed. Okay. It said, even from the day of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances. That's why he turned his back on us for a while. Okay, we're still at the, we're, we're, we're now at the end of that. But the Most High turned his back on us. It's in that time where, in Hosea said, then where he said, you are not my people. Now you shall be called the children of Israel. Because we're generally not uh, known to be the children of Israel at this time. Okay, we're just blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and South Americans, and Central Americans, and so on and so forth. Everything but the children of Israel, the child, the child of God, the, the the princes of the power, Yasharala. Okay, it says, uh, have and uh, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances, the the statutes, laws, and commandments. And have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? All right. I think that was the point. Um, yeah, and this is another great chapter. But let's go back to the beginning, and well, not the beginning, but Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, when he said he would deal with us. Um. Verse seven, for, verse six, for thou art an holy nation unto the Lord thy power, Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto Himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay. So He chose us. Um. I keep reading. The Lord Yahweh did not set His love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people but because the Lord Yahweh loved you and because he kept excuse me he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers he kept his word okay had the Lord Yahweh brought you out of with the mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he's going to do that again this time also because he still loves us. The difference is he's got to punish the two-thirds, man, for not coming back to him because only the elect was able to come back. And that's the difference, okay? There's an elect, a remnant that, that the Most High has chosen and has given to Yahweh Shai to be his, Okay? Those are the ones, the 144,000, one third that will be able to come out of this thing and make it for the whole nation. The rest of the two thirds will have to come back into this thing after death by pain. It's just that simple. You trying to add in other heathen, there's nowhere that other heathen are being added in. You need to be, I had this debate, I guess you can say, with a family member, and, and he kept trying to debate. Well, well he opened it up and Paul and other, all the chapters I'm going into, but I simply thought, I was like, why? Why do they need to come into this? <laughs> why? They don't need to be saved. They didn't get punished with us. Why should they get to reap the benefits? Okay, and this is just common sense things. But I said, tell, show me the scriptures where he said he was going to deal with everybody. It said Jew nor Greek. Yeah, those were Israelite foreigners that moved away, that were scattered. As the curses say, which I'm going there now, just to prove the point, 64, I believe it is. Yep. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 64, and the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And when you, uh, and, and there thou shalt serve other gods which thou neither 
neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. And among these nations thou shalt find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord Yahweh shall give thee a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And all of us have are, are been doing that. Even the ones that, that were mingled amongst the heathen, meaning the men took on wives of the heathen until their children begin to, to look like wives, I mean, look like the heathen themselves, generation after generation. But the seed of that man still goes back to Israelites. All right, so they're still Israelites. Okay, they're still the children of the promise. They're still the children of the glory and the blessings. Okay, whether they're two-thirds or they're not. Or, 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 or the elect. Okay, they still go back to Israelites. So let me go from there. And to, uh, I'm sure these are all coming out. Whether they're doing mighty videos with these. Amos 9 and 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Like as corn is sifted in the sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Okay, so he's going to pull all the Israelites out. Okay, of all the other nations. He's going to search the seeds and find out whose are the Israelites. He knows all the hairs on our head. You think he don't know all of the, 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 the his chosen people? Every last one, whether... They look like a, a, a Nathan, a heathen nation, or, or something else. Okay, it says, uh, All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which I say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Okay, the two-thirds are still going to got to get their punishment, though. The elect shall be saved, and that remnant shall they be saved. Okay? So that pretty much hit the point, but let me go back to Romans 11. I mean, the, the lesson really should be over, but... A lot of people, you know, don't don't catch it. Um, Romans 11 and 2. The Most High have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture said of Elijah, how he maketh intercession against the most, I mean, to the Most High against the Israel, saying, I mean, Isaiah. No, that is Elijah. Uh, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone. And they seek my life. Okay, talking about how the people want to kill their own. The two thirds want to kill the prophets, want to kill the servants of the Heavenly Father because they didn't like the judgments. You know, I'm just thinking of a script right now. I recall it. Um, Matthew 5 17, I believe it is. Yep. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law And who was the law given unto? To the children of Israel Okay Or the prophets Prophesied that the words of all the prophets Saying that the Most High will come back unto Israel That that will stand as well I am not come to destroy but to fulfill To make sure those things take place And that they happen Okay Not to fulfill them when they were done Okay it's fulfilled now the cup is empty You 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 Man, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Okay? It says, Whosoever shall teach, excuse me, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but they're still going to be there. A lot of our people that are still teaching the wrong things, they're going to still be in the kingdom of heaven. As kings and priests, but they will have shame. They're still going to be Israelites, but they will have shame. The elect are not going to have shame, but the, the elect are going to have fame and and, and, and and be rejoicing. Okay, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And when it goes on, and on, but uh, we want to go from there to let's go to the book of uh, let me see what I wanted back in the Romans chapter 11, we're around three now. Okay, let's um, jump down. Yep, verse um, 
Yep. Verse, you can read those other parts. The, the elect won't bow down to the, uh, to Baal or any other false gods or anything. Okay. Uh, verse 5. Even so, then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Okay. And that remnant are the elect. The election. And if by grace, then there's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. They go hand in hand. Okay, what then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So the two-thirds were blinded. The elect will get this. They will understand this. Okay, according to as it is written, the Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Speaking of uh, Isaiah... I think it was even in Daniel, but particularly Isaiah. Um, yep, yep. Let's get to verse 11. It says, uh, I say then, they uh, have they stumbled that they should fall? Yahweh forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Yeah, but the thing is, they're not provoking them with another nation. They're provoking them with Israelite foreigners. Okay, and I'm going to prove that. Um, matter of fact, at 13. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness when they come all back together, when the whole nation is brought back. That's gospel to bring all the Israelites back into the fold. Those that thought they were dead and they didn't have a chance because they were heathens. Now they get to come back because they're not actual heathens. They're actually the children of Israel through the seed line. Okay, because they have been scattered. Okay, and why did they become like heathens? Because their law, statutes, and commandments were taken away. Their practice in the ordinances were taken away. Okay, when you look at the big picture, when, when the northern kingdom came over to the Americas, or as it says in the scriptures, in um, Second Ages, I believe it's the 13th chapter, talks about they went to Asherith, a land which never mankind dwelt, the Americas, if you will. They had a better resemblance of the scriptures, but they were given unto idols, so they were already worshiping other gods with other practices. Okay, when they got over here, they did the same thing, even though they wrote the commandments down in the paleo on, on the Love's Luna stone and so on and so forth. Okay, they left the evidence of building pyramid building over here, concluding that they are the same people. Okay, that was under uh, in Egypt. All right. <clears throat> All right, you see how that how that ties in. Those are still the same people. All right, it says um, and I'll get to the to the, the blue letter in a second. Thirteen, I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Now let me go into the blue letter. Here we go. Um, get to the point. Um. 11, yeah, salvation is coming to the Gentiles. And when this is why we look up words. This is why the apostles really make sure that we go into these words. Okay? To get the full understanding. Gentiles, ethnos. Okay? Ethnos. Uh, Strong's G1484. All right? It says, ethnos, probably from... 1486, uh, a race as the of the same habit, okay, of the same habit as what the Israelites. But continue on, a tribe, especially a foreign non-Jewish one, usually by implication, pagan, Gentile, heathen nation, people. Yeah, that's what we became, being scattered and living, and picking up the customs. And even the looks of those other nations. Even though our spirit still goes back to the Most High. 
So if you live in a land, like we've been in America, how long? 400 years? Talk about um, so-called Negroes. We haven't lost those customs that we were practicing when we were picked up in slavery from the west coast of Africa. Okay? We're Americanized now. We love big screen TVs and smartphones and American football and so on and so forth. You guys don't question that, but then you want to question how, you know, the, the foods we eat over here, you question, but you don't question about that, that, that our people could be mingled amongst the other people. Because you people are carnal and you don't look at things spiritually. If you can't see it, you're not spiritual enough. That don't mean everybody's an Israelite. That don't mean anybody that likes hip-hop is now an Israelite. That doesn't mean that. It means you got to look at the spirit. And what's beautiful about this time, we don't have to discern if somebody is a, 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 an Israelite or not only by if they are uh, rehearsing the righteous acts. In the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, that's the easy indicator. All right? They believe in the word. They believe in the name. They believe in the prophecies. Okay? Continuing on because there's more to this. And, it, and, it, and it, some may say it won't, hurt, it won't help. But it says, A multitude, whether of men or, or of beasts, associated or living together. Okay? A company, troop, swarm. Here we go. A multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. Genes. Seed. Okay? Of the same genetic makeup. Israelites. Okay? It's right there. It's right there. All right? So, say what you will about it. I'll go back to here. Say what you will about it, but there shouldn't be any uh, issues breaking down how the Israelites are still the people or these Gentiles of these other nations. Okay, the same people. It says, um, verse uh, 14, because you got to understand I'll read it. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Yeah, the emulation because they were the, the those of the commonwealth that knew they were Israelites. They were already uh, rehearsing righteous acts and practicing the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But that was to bring them into the fold that they may begin to practice, rehearse those righteous acts again. But they were coming from Greek and different other heathenistic um, uh, places and customs. That's why when you go into Acts, the second chapter, matter of fact, I'll get it. Acts, the second chapter, further down, I believe. I'll say here, yep, I'll read this one, Acts 2 and 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven because they were scattered. Okay? Now that this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language, in the language of the lands which they were coming from, when the Holy Spirit was given unto them to speak in the tongues. It says, um, and they were amazed and marveled one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Yeah, how do they know all these languages? They're from Galilee. It says, and how... Here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, because they were born in these other nations. And from this point, the next three verses is a list of other nations that Israelites aren't known to be in. But they were scattered, as I read from Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 64th verse. Okay? And that's why he would sift them back in. But starting with sifting the elect, by, by fishing the elect out, man. Okay, with this word. And the rest will be brought back in after death by pain. All right. See how that works? Okay, so, so Lord willing, this was at a fine. I don't want to make it too long. Just kind of want to hit these points. But um, yeah, man. Matter of fact, one, one more. Two more, actually. Two more. Amos 3 and 3. I mean, uh, three and two. 
Yeah, it says, um, I started at one, Amos 3 and 1, hear this word that the Lord Yahweh have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up uh, from the land of Egypt, saying, only you have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. Okay, he only knows us like that. Okay, the Most High only knows us like that. We're going to Psalms. Where we want it. Um, one, let's go to 149. It's 149. It's not, it's 147. 19. Um, yep, 147 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord Yahweh. Okay, so we're still to, to perform that. We're still supposed to keep that to the best of our ability. That, that, that law is still for us. Okay. So he didn't give it unto another nation. He gave it to the Israelite foreigners that were scattered. And that's the mixed multitude that you see over here. Just to hit the point. The seventh chapter. Okay. And it talks about all the tribes that were sealed. Okay. All the tribes were sealed, right? And then uh, in verse 9 it says, And this beheld... And lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongue st stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Those are also Israelite foreigners, okay, that may have practiced other customs, other beliefs, but they've come back to Yahweh Bashim Shai in sincerity, belief, and in truth, and indeed, okay. That's how they earn those white robes. All right? So, Lord willing, this was edifying. We'll give all praise and glories unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Harakak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto your elect. Until the next one, Shalom.